Civil War. Most Americans have heard of the possibility that a second civil war could erupt in the United States of America. I wanted to briefly explain what that might look like, but first let's take a look at some of the events in 2022 that could instigate a civil war. We are told by the American news media that a five-year-old has the necessary life judgment skills in order to determine if they wish to transition their gender. But the same news media tells us that an 18-year-old is not old enough to possess the mental wisdom to own an AR-15. President Joe Biden gives contradictory messages on whether anyone in his administration is working on lowering your gas prices. Biden says he is simultaneously working on reducing gas prices, and at the same time, he says there is nothing to be done. Listen. When it comes to the gas prices, uh, we're going through an incredible transition that is taking place that, God willing, when it's over, we'll be stronger and the world will be stronger and less reliant on fossil fuels when this is over. See, he's lying. He is forcing a transition away from fossil fuels. But do the employees at the Biden White House use electric cars? No, they use giant armored SUVs that are gas-guzzling groundhogs. They're not going to transition from fossil fuels anytime soon. You can't power a passenger jet with, without fossil fuels. So what is he talking about? Let's listen in to Biden just a week later. Because of a war in, uh, in Ukraine, gas prices and food prices are extremely high. Uh, for example, we got millions of tons of wheat that is not able to get out and get to market, causing everything from a loaf of bread to cost so much money to food shortages all across the world. And so we're trying to work through, you know, a war. We're trying to work through how we can get that harbor open and uh, get get uh, the, you know, tens of thousands of tons of grain that are there. The same with gasoline. You have the, 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 the issue that's occurring now is you have Europe deciding that they're going to further curtail the purchase of, of, of Russian oil. And there's a whole lot but you criticized Trump restricting the flow of Russian energy as not helpful to our partners in Europe. Uh, Joe Biden should have worked harder at diplomacy with Russia to avoid a war in the first place. What did he say to Putin last year that induced Putin to invade Ukraine? We'd like to know because those conversations are still top secret. But look here at how Biden looks for anyone and everyone to blame about gasoline prices. But he said prior to that that this is a natural transition to alternative energy, green energy sources away from fossil fuels. So he gives contradictory answers. President Biden's rapid response director who sicked fact checkers on townhall.com leaves the White House. Mike Gwynn, White House rapid response director, confirmed he is leaving the White House for the Treasury Department. On his way out the door, White House Press Secretary Jean-Pierre called Gwynn an indispensable member of our team and added he's moving on to bigger and better things, despite the fact that the Treasury Department is not a promotion from the White House communications team. Gwynn sicked supposedly in independent fact-checkers on media, such as townhall.com, who dared to tell the truth about how disarrayed the administration is. Gwynn flagged stories at townhall.com that cast Biden and his administration in an accurate but negative light, urging independent fact-checkers to launch biased attacks against our media coverage. More than 70 people managed the president's social media accounts. When D Donald Trump was president, there was probably two people, Trump and an assistant. So they've got over 70 people at the Biden White House working on spinning social media to make Biden look competent. Do you think that they had even 70 people at the Biden White House trying to evacuate Americans from Afghanistan? Or 70 people working on diplomacy with Russia? Yeah, to avoid a war in Ukraine? No, it doesn't appear to be. There appears to be two different standards of the legal standard in America. 
On the facade of the Supreme Court Justice Building in Washington, D.C. is the standard, the motto, equal justice under law. But as we've seen in 2022, there is one set of justice for the establishment, particularly Democrat politicians, and another standard of justice for the rest of us. Here we have Hillary Clinton lawyer Michael Sussman was found was acquitted because even though he had lied to the FBI and claiming he was a private citizen bringing them uh, fabricated dirt on Donald Trump and Alpha Bank receiving payments from Russia, the jury said that lying to the FBI in this case was not a crime because if you lie to the FBI but your goal is to quote, get Trump, unquote, it's okay to break the law. Tell that to any other American who lied to the FBI and see if that works for them. Lawyers who torched New York Police Department police vehicles with Molotov cocktails get a plea deal. U.S. Attorney's Office stated that they will request a maximum sentence of two years in prison two years in prison for these Democrats in good standing Molotov cocktailing police cars in New York City during the George Floyd riots. And yet, federal judges say that if you're a January 6th defendant who didn't Molotov cocktail anybody, these judges will say, you need the book thrown at you. Here this judge says, for people to say people who participated in the protests of the summer of 2020 Got no jail time. That's not my experience in my court. So you get the book thrown at you if you don't serve the interests of the Democratic Party. But if you are a Democrat in good standing, such as these two Democrat activists, you get a slap on the wrist. But don't you dare run as president and win the presidency in the state of New York without the assistance of the Democratic Party in the state of New York. They will mobilize every attorney's office to prosecuting and persecuting officials of the Trump administration and the Trump family to punish them for not winning with the approval of the Democratic Party. We clearly have an unequal system of justice under the law. When you have the entire news media and the entire government stating that they and their goals are above the law, and above the wishes of America's parents. This could lead to civil war. So what does it mean to say America could head into civil war too? Another civil war. One scenario would go like this. America's mega cities consistently vote Democrat. They vote for everything that gets given to them for free by the kind Democratic Party. The people who work in this country, the farmers, the people who work in factories, those in middle America, those are the people that supply these goods, the food, the medicine, to the people in the mega cities. If a civil war starts in our country because of the policies, the artificial divisions of Joe Biden and the Democratic Party, one of the first things that would happen would be that the semi-trucks that bring food and medicine and supplies into America's mega cities would stop coming. When the food runs out in a mega city, the people there, starving and terrified, would begin moving out into the suburbs looking for food. That's when they would come face to face with middle America. They would come to the lawns of your family and your relatives and your co-workers, show up on the front lawn demanding food, or else, these mega city patrons would say, you will suffer the consequences if you don't give us the food we demand. And the families who have stockpiles of food and ammunition would settle the disagreement with finality and in a manner not to the liking of the Democrat voters who cannot provide themselves that find themselves in mega cities with no food, no supplies, no medicine, and suddenly they realize the contempt that they held Trump voters in the contempt that they held for American taxpayers, the contempt that they held for American workers and American producers and American creators, that contempt will bring them to a deserved end. That's what would happen in an American Civil War in this new decade. 
and the result would not be to the liking of anyone who voted for Joe Biden in the 2020 presidential election. Thank you.